our leadership lesson from Luke. Let's let's we're talking about what Jesus did. Uh, let's let's go let's go to the Bible. The the whole message talking about him, guiding towards him, talking about him. And I was just trying to look at like obviously there were no um, social media influencers. There was no Twitch streamers in uh, in Bible times. But I just I was just trying to think of this theme of of influences and and we as leaders tend to sorry not leaders but the generation of influences tend to just be driving towards self-promotion. We spoke about, you know, Logan Paul and KSI. That, that, it's great that they're using promotion to be able to, the, you know, the influence that they have to be able to sell a drink. And, and unfortunately, the influence that, that Kai had, uh, the Twitch streamer, you know, he, you know, a bit of self-promotion led to some riots. You know, it's not that, not that great. And, and so I think that we can, wasn't exactly the theme of what we spoke about today, but I think that if we're talking about influencers, we need to be very careful that we're not aiming to be influencers because of self-promotion, that we're not trying to be influencers to build ourselves up. You know, that's one thing that, you know, before, before uh, Dr. Rod and I start this podcast, we always pray. And one of the most common themes we pray is, Lord, it's not about us. Like, this is not, not about, like, it's not our not our message we want to get out there. It's, it's your message. It's, it's his message that, that, we, that we're just here to be his servants. And, and we just pray that, that, that this impacts and positively influences some people. And so I just kind of want this to be a little bit of a warning for you as a leader if you're just trying to chase the influence, if you're just trying to force self-promotion. And I want to lead you to uh, Luke chapter 2 from verse 8. I'm not going to read the whole thing. However, it, the, the uh, title of it is The Shepherds and the Angels. And I'm going to start from... If you're going to talk about verse... the shepherds, you better start in verse 8. <laughs> Okay, Pastor. Oh, no, right. Well, that's what I'm gonna. I, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> sum up. But let me just, let me just say. Look, I'll be honest. I avoid reading from the passages for a number of reasons. One is because we don't necessarily have to read the whole thing to get the key. You know, sometimes it's just a verse we want to get it. And also, um. I have been diagnosed with dyslexia, and so I suffer from being able to read out loud, and so or read in general. And reading out loud is a challenge for me. So I try to I try to skim and summarize, but I've been challenged. So with the strength of the Holy Spirit behind me, let me read this passage all through to you. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone upon them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news of great joy that there will be all that that will be for all the people. Today in in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying glory to God to the highest and on earth peace to men of whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying there. I suppose what I wanted to get at with this with this uh, passage was talking about influences and self-promotion. Could you imagine if you had a 
a sky full of angels promoting you and your business, promoting your church, your ministry, promoting like, like imagine that, imagine that, right? And I kind of, I like to really look meta at some of these things. And and the way that I look at that, I think about like, okay, who, who was being promoted at that time? Well, it was Jesus. And what was Jesus doing? Well, he was just humbly, humbly, you know, doing his purpose. That's all he was doing. He was humbly doing his purpose. He turned up on earth as a human, as a baby, went through all of that journey for us. And I just think it's 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 incredible that when we humbly do our purpose, God will find a way to promote us. Now, I'm not saying ignore marketing. I shouldn't because half of my business is I do digital marketing for clients. So definitely digital marketing and marketing is important. You have to do marketing. But there's a difference between marketing and doing what you doing you know, things responsibly and self-promotion. I just kind of feel like there's there is this borderline that we as leaders, and especially in this in this realm of of influencers, we need to be very careful that we're not in the game of self-promotion. Yes, share your ideas. Yes, use good business practices. Yes, do marketing. Yes, do all those sorts of things. But I think the key that we need to focus on is make sure that we are following our mission. Make sure that we are following our purpose. Make sure you're doing what God has called you to do with humility, not doing the self-promotion, and just trust that God will do the, the promotion for you. Maybe it won't be a billboard of angels in the sky, but God will bring the right clients to you Still got to do marketing, still got to run a good business, still got to do all the good business practices, but don't be focused on self-promotion, you know, that pride stuff. Don't don't feel like you need to over-inflate yourself and and, and put on a facade and think like, none of that. Just, Just do what God has called you to and trust that God will bring the people. You know, for example, with this podcast, Dr. Rod and I aren't like, we're not claiming to be the experts. We're just sharing from our experience and stories and and just doing what we believe God has called us. It's something that we believe God has called us to do this, this podcast. And so we're doing it humbly, not many viewers. You know, it's it, it, it we're only small. However, I'm get I'm started to get my digital marketing team to start doing some work in the background. And in the last week, we've seen a massive increase in, in viewership the, of just a couple of the ones that they've started working on. There's wisdom in that. But I'm not sitting here promoting ourselves and saying we're amazing and saying all like, like I'm not, you know, it, it's not about that. We're just sharing our sharing our thoughts, doing doing our mission, humbly doing our mission, and seeing how God, God can do the rest. But you know what? We, it's our job to partner with God. Dr. Rod, what did you get from that passage? Uh quite a few things. <laughs> It, it appears from that um, passage that the shepherds knew the truth. They knew who Jesus was. But it also appears that they didn't go and boast that they were the first people to see him. So you made the point, of course, that, that leaders leadership isn't about self-promotion. These, these shepherds had surely discovered something that was literally world-changing. They went back to their job they were praising the Lord, all right, but they didn't claim any particular privilege mm. from what they had seen. In fact, their attention was more on Jesus than it was on on themselves. Mm. The other thing was, it's interesting that one of the thoughts that that went through my mind as you read, and you actually read beautifully, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's there, there's a couple of things. It's because the way know, Bible's laid out, it does yeah. make it a little easier, and. I know the story and I've read it a bunch of times in the last few days, <laughs> so it does make it a little bit easier. <laughs> the other thing that went went through my mind was that, you know, let, let's say we did a bit of a survey and we asked people, now, if you were God, how would you have appeared to humankind? Right? Yep. Thunder, lightning. <laughs> 
But God chose, and we have to remember Jesus was God, right? Mm. Emmanuel, God with us, not a separate person. He was not created by God because he existed just as God is. So Jesus is part of the Godhead. The ancients described mm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, three persons but one substance. Mm. All right, so there's there's a oneness there. But God chose to appear in the form of a human being. Mm. How many of us, <laughs> seeing that the world was in such a terrible state, would have chosen to appear? Yeah. Uh, Bethlehem was a village of maybe, I think, about 300 people. Mm. wasn't even a city. It wasn't of particular note um, either. He, he was born probably not in a stable, but probably in, in the ground floor of a house. It was pretty common for, for homes. They were mainly made of stone. I mean, it's even doubtful that Joseph was a carpenter. He's more likely a stonemason, but... That doesn't really matter. Um, the house he was born in probably belonged to relatives of Joseph. It was probably two stories with the ground floor devoted primarily to the housing of livestock. It was wintertime. The house, the livestock were kept indoors because the hot air would rise and, and warm the living quarters above. And then there'd be a flat roof on top, which was used a lot in the summertime, which was which was So hot. the heat would rise up to keep them warm, but... The be a bit of smell as well. Would also yeah, 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 rise sure, up. Sure. <laughs> so he was probably he was probably born in a feeding trough. Mm. That's pretty humble. Mm. That's pretty humble. And um, of course, even his his brother or half brother James didn't recognise who he was. It wasn't until after the resurrection that yep. James, uh, his own half brother, recognised that he was in fact. The, the Messiah and James went on to become one of the leaders in the church. So I think there's a great lesson for leadership here. Mm. Um, not not turn yourself into a baby, but, you know, just be humble yeah. and let God do the lifting up. And mm. this is hard. Yep. Honestly, look, um, I, I'll tell a bit of a story about myself here. I, I'm almost 67 years of age. It won't be too long before I have my birthday. And, um, you know, I, I pray and meditate and read the Bible a bit, probably not as much as many as I should and as much as many do, but it was about a year ago when I just felt a conviction from the Lord. We Pentecostals say, I heard from God or God spoke mm -hmm. to me. But it's a kind of conviction that wells up from deep within. The conviction was this, why am I still seeking identity? Mm. And I thought, my goodness, I thought I'd resolve that issue a long time ago because I teach, I, as you know, I'm a pastor. I teach that our identity is determined by our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what gives us identity. And yet, here am I being convicted of the fact that I still hadn't yet fully internalised that teaching yeah. because I'm still looking for recognition. Mm. You know, we had a chat before we, we started our podcast today about the number of people who had watched our videos. And I'm thinking, oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and there's such a temptation to think, yeah, 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 I want to become better now and I want to become better mm -hmm. now. And, and yet that's unchristian. It's yes. ungodly. Yeah. Uh, the but only name. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong to, to wish growth like that, there's no. nothing wrong with that because, like, for for me, it's like I want to I want to have more viewers, not for us to be more famous, but I want us to have more viewers because I believe that God's given us a message and I want to help more people. That's you know? right, but but we just have to fight against that that carnality that says, you know, I I want to see my name up in lights. Yep. I want to see more mm. likes. Mm -hmm. I want to see positive comments. I want to you know yep. I want to monetize our channel. I want to do this. Yep. I want to do that. We have to fight it. Mm. Uh, I certainly know I, I, I have to fight it mm. because there's something in me that says I want to be important. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, but you know where I find that importance? It's in relationship in my family. Mm. If I can just take one more moment 
as a dad. You know, as a, as a kid, I wanted to be a superhero. Um, we didn't have the same kind of superhero mid, uh, movies. There used to be a, a TV program. I, I can't actually remember the name of it now, but but the hero was on a horse and the hero always won the heart of the lady and I wanted to be like that, Yeah, you know. Um, and and there's always there's always a part of me. There's still a part of me. I want to be the hero, but mm. I've I've been a hero. Let me tell you, yeah. I was a hero to my two children. Mm. When my little girl, when they were little girls, when they were toddlers, preschoolers, every time I came home from work, I was the world's greatest hero. Mm. I've been the world's greatest hero, Craig. Mm. I was the world's greatest hero to my two little girls. Yeah. And that, and I realised then, you know, that that's 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 what really satisfies the craving. Yeah, because you're following your purpose. Like at at that time, your purpose is to be a father. And, and well, and I still am. I still am. Still, still, and and, and a grandfather. I'm still a, a tiny hero to my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, They've I got think, husbands now who yes. who are their major heroes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that. I think that you're 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 just emphasizing the point of like when we are actually following our purpose rather than trying to chase self promotion when we are just pursuing our purpose that's where fulfillment happens that's where that's where God can we do our part it doesn't mean we just sit back and go well God will do it all no 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 we we still need to we still need to do our part still need to do some marketing. I still need to, we need to make sure our thumbnails are right. We need to make sure our, our, our captions are right. We, we, we can still improve. We can be better, but it's, it's to pursue our purpose and to see the fulfillment of our purpose, not to see self-promotion. I think that that's, that's one thing that I, I kind of want to encourage people today is that God, don't worry about self-promotion. Worry about your purpose Focus on your purpose, not the self-promotion, because that's when you you do your part and allow God to do his part. When we are doing self-promotion, I feel like that's taking faith away from what God has put in us. And we feeling like, well, we I need to do it. I need to be in charge of this. I need to fluff up myself and I need to exaggerate things and I need to need to prove how good I am for my own benefit. That's you being in the place of God. But when we as leaders can do our part, do use the skills that God's given us, use the experience that God's given us, use the skills of the people around us, team up with people, make sure we're pursuing our purpose. And through that, that is how then God can add his miraculous power to it to help expand the impact, the influence while we're pursuing purpose. Hey, you just watched an excerpt from the On The Cube Leadership Podcast. If you like that, hit the like button and put a comment below. Hey, if you want to watch more videos like this, check out our channel. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe.